What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be taking a look at a title called Army of Ruin. This is another chip off the old Vampire Survivors block, but this time around, what caught my attention is that this game is being developed by the team that did Ziggurat and Ziggurat 2. Now, if you've never played those games before, those games are made by a company that definitely knows how to make games that look and feel good. And so anyways, this may be the first time that a team that's really art focused and really UI focused and really kind of like game mouthfeel focused, I don't even know, game feel? I don't know what the game equivalent of mouthfeel would be, but anyways, this is a team that cares very, very much about their game feeling good. And they're taking a crack at creating a Vampire Survivors game called Army of Ruin. I played the game for about two hours prior to this recording, and I'm very, very happy to have you. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, you can look down below in the description, and I will have a link for you. And then on top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord, my Twitch stream, and all the other associated links that you might want to. So what's going on on screen right now? Well, it's not too hard to derive. If you played anything Vampire Survivors related before, uh, it's a game about churning through hordes of enemies. The little blue crystals are XP. As we level up, we get new abilities and new trinkets. They all come together to coalesce into sort of synergies that make us stronger and kick more ass. And so that's exactly what we're trying to do right now. As of right now, I've got myself the Necromancer Gauntlets. I've got myself a Magic Wand, and I'm playing the character known only as Saul and we're churning through some goblins out here. I've got a trinket called the Dragon Heart that's increasing my damage. And so anyways, that's exactly where we're at. The game controls very, very simply. You can use W, A, S, and D to make the whole thing happen. I'm going to upgrade my magic staff right there. If you prefer not to control the game with W, A, S, and D, you can click and hold, and you can basically get a virtual uh, analog stick on screen that will allow you to move that way. I actually think that's a really, really good quality of life change, just largely due to the fact that uh, some people got stiff hands. I've noticed as I've gotten older, I've spent my entire life parked in front of a computer screen since I was like eight years old. And sometimes my hands don't even want to make a fist. And so I totally get it. Sometimes you got, you know, a little bit of a problem going on that a little thing like that can really help out with. Uh, as of right now, the game is in early access. It has three characters available from what I've seen so far. I don't know if there's more characters that I can unlock. We'll take a look at the UI once we get to the menu after this run. But for right now, we are doing the simple mode runs of just about everything. Yeah, those bracers right there. They gave me some cooldown reduction on my ability to zap people with my mental berry blast. Uh, but anyways, we'll check the UI once we get into the main menu. The rounds are only about 10 minutes long. And so I'm, I'm not too... I do want that chest right there. Let me get that chest. That's a good looking chest animation right there. And it looks like it upgraded our damage by 15%. That's good because... We're going to have to churn through some enemies if we want to survive this thing. All right, so let's see what we got going on here. We got little ghosty boys. The first thing that jumped out at me about this game is that it does have a very direct and a very, very real art style, which is really a lot of the Vampire Survivor style games that come out are basically just like asset packs or like pixel art that was bought off of something like itch.io, for example. And I am really, really glad to see someone enter the foray that was interested in making their own custom kind of animations and making their own customized characters and things of that nature in order to make the game have a little bit more atmosphere and a little bit more of a game world, the Storm Javelin, huh? I think I could do Storm Javelin, sure. Storm Javelin is going to throw out javelins, and they make like a little area of denial kind of zappy boy spot uh, that enemies can't be on without getting really badly hurt. I'm going to have to pop my special ability. Did I mention that? Every character in this game has an ultimate ability. So when you start out as a new player, every character has their weapon. No other character can get that weapon until you've played a level and survived for 10 minutes. And then that weapon becomes unlocked for all the other characters. Every character also has an ultimate, and the ultimate is exclusive to the character that you're currently playing. Um, I don't know if I want the throwing axe. I would like to see a reroll option down here for money, or a skip option, just in case you don't want to take the upgrade, because you only get four active slots and four passive slots. And so, anyways, that's got me feeling a little bit nervous. I will go Raven's Wing, I guess. I've never taken Raven's Wing before. I unlocked it a little bit ago. Um, I do think that the nerf to the XP that we're going to be bringing in is a little bit worrisome. Absolutely love those death animations on those little goblins right there. Every single enemy in this game has an animation that they play when they die. And so you have like little weapons and 
spears and explosions of light and things of that nature that make it all look really, really good. Crawling root might be okay. We do need something as like a spacer though to get enemies off of us and I think Crimson Flask will help out with that. Every uh, 75 enemies that we kill, the Crimson Flask will go off and push all the enemies back. In this game you do accumulate currency just like you do in other games. Uh, so you're getting gold down here at the bottom and that's our kill counter. The gold is used for permanent passive upgrades that you can play around with in the menu in between rounds. And of course they are fully respectable, it doesn't cost you anything, you can move things around as much as you like, desire, want to, all that kind of fun stuff. Let's go ahead and go for necromancer gauntlets I guess so that we get a double shot. Yeah, give me a little double shot of that necromantic magic right there. Give me, give me a little double zap, a little one-two punch of enemy silencing. Uh, I'm a little bit worried. I'm a tiny bit worried about our ability to keep enemies off of us for right now. I'm an unrepentant Bible and garlic addict when it comes to games like this. I'm going to upgrade my Storm Javelin. And so I like to have things that like get enemies away from me so that I can kind of just like idle farm. And we don't really have that aside from Crimson Flask, which is like... It's doing its best, but we may want to throw a couple upgrades into it just so our pathing becomes a little bit easier to identify. You saw the Crimson Flask go off right there. Almost let a spider take a chunk out of my leg, unfortunately. Uh, let's upgrade Crimson Flask so that it goes off every 60 kills. And I may stop upgrading it there. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. Uh, we are on the sixth wave. As of right now, we are on the easy mode variant. Uh, you can only play the easy mode variants of the levels until you've unlocked a certain number of challenges, basically. Uh, the game is full of challenges. You can find them on the challenge menu. Uh, if I go to the options, it'll be in the top right corner here. Uh, there's a bunch of general purpose challenges that when you unlock them and you do them, like kill a certain amount of enemies, loot a certain amount of gold, open a certain amount of chests, that kind of stuff. You unlock new trinkets, you unlock gold. Other goodies that's going to help your journey through the goblin lands a little bit better. Uh, every level in this game has a theme as far as I saw. I'll have to go back to the menu, but there was like three to six levels from the time that I played. Let's go... Let's go Storm Javelin. I'd like to keep my, my damage on the up and up, I guess. And like thinning out enemies with those little pools of electricity or at least softening them up before they get to me. Uh, it appears to be accomplishing the effect that I was looking for, which is really like create for me a gap spacer. And it seems to be going all right. I'm going to try and scoop up as many crystals as I can. The 25% XP nerf has me worried, though, because there are achievements and whatnot you can get for hitting certain level thresholds, which is going to be easier on the longer, higher difficulty variations of the game. But on the easy mode, getting to level 20 can be a tiny bit difficult. Ooh, we lose X. Do I lose even more XP gain, or am I just getting... No, nothing's changing right there. Let's go for the extra damage, then. Extra damage is good. I don't need to avoid enemies if I'm killing them before they make landfall. Fire off my ultimate real quick. I don't really have anything else to spend it on anyways, so we might as well. But the run appears to be going all right. I mean, they are getting a little bit close for comfort right now. With those enemies right there that spawn more enemies when they die, so they fragment and turn into like five enemies whenever you kill one of them. That's rough. That's nasty. Sometimes, you, ooh, I took some solid damage right there. One thing that I think the game does really, really well, actually, is there's a, there's been a problem with a lot of Vampire Survivor style games in that, like, hit detection. Not hit detection, actually. That's the wrong word. Hit feedback. There we go. Uh, hit feedback can be a little bit difficult to divulge out of games like this. And this game does a really, really good job with hit feedback, which is something I'm really thankful to see. A little bit more money right there, and then 15% more damage. Absolutely. A little bit of avocado right there to take the sting off. Nothing heals the body of various puncture wounds and general blunt force trauma like eating an avocado. Uh, we can go... Let's go Crawling Root upgrade. I haven't seen if the game has any ultimates or anything with the easy levels. Unfortunately, being the only thing unlocked at the beginning of the game, uh, alas, 10 minutes is not really enough time to max out an ability or anything else like that. So I don't know if there's ultimates or like evos or anything of that kind as of right now. Uh, yeah, this, this could be problematic. I see potential issues arising. Luckily, Flask bailed us out right there at just the right moment. 
Let's go ahead and get ourselves out of this kill box, and then let's go for more Storm Javelin shots. I think Storm Javelin's doing its thing right now. I think it's doing a little bit of heavy lifting, just kind of like making the enemy blobs a little bit thinner and less dense. And so it may actually get us out of this. This build, however, is not the greatest build that I've ever made. There is an orbital ability that's like Bible that I think is more or less like you always take it if it comes up. And I sort of like drug my feet for like five level ups trying to see if it would come up or not, but then it didn't. So, alas. Uh, there is an avocado over there, but I think the avocado might be a trap. If we go for that avocado, I feel like we're not going to walk it off very well. Keep on murdering, firing special abilities everywhere. There we go. Now I can get my avocado. Give me, give me, give me my avocado. I want my avocado. Get away from some of these spiders, dude. If I can get through, like some of the denser arrangements of enemies. Very tight hitboxes in this game, by the way. The hitboxes feel very, very, very good. You can make some very precise maneuvers while playing the game. And you will not take accidental hits a lot of the time, which, once again, I feel like is an area where games like this kind of tend to suffer a little bit. Uh, let's go for a bigger pushback, I guess, from Crimson Flask, because I just I feel a little crowded right now, and it's making it hard to focus. I'm trying to pick a direction and, like, go in that direction, and I haven't really been able to do that to any greater level of success. A little bit of damage taken right there. Unfortunately, the Storm Javelin has not been landing where I want it to land. And eating at some of these enemies. But we are on the final wave right now before the boss shows up. And things get really, really rowdy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. If I could get a pushback soon, that'd be good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good little pushback right there. Damage still seems to be a little bit weak and not where I want it to be. Uh, goblins broke through on that side, so I think we're going to have to take a little bit of damage. I could have popped my ultimate right there, but unfortunately wasn't really an option. I would like to see the ability to modify and upgrade your ultimate, though. That sounds like something that I could get behind. These guys right here are going to flush me to the right, but I'm actually somewhat okay with that because right now we're a little bit free and clear of most of the enemies, so it might be all right. The environment is full of destructibles, uh, those destructibles are not uniform, so for example, in a lot of games, it's like a candelabra or like a pot or something like that. Uh, you got to kind of look around for the destructibles in this game because they can be crates, they can be boxes, they can be all kinds of things around uh, that may not necessarily super look like something that's going to be immediately giving you loot, but it does. Another chest right there, probably the final chest. We got three upgrades. Two of them went to damage, which is great. I think we could definitely use that. And we've got some plants or something coming in at us. I don't know where the boss is at, but we're going to want to track down the boss. The enemies are getting more dense as I go this way, so I'm guessing the boss is over here. We've been rooted. A little bit unfortunate. Would rather not be rooted right now, but rooted I am. Looks like those little guys don't actually drop any XP or anything either. I'm going to try and weasel my way through over here, but I don't know if it's going to be successful. Yeah, give me a little pushback action right there. We'll keep on, like, hitting enemies when and where we can. Maybe collecting a little XP when and where we can. Crimson Flask is going off pretty frequently now, which I think is going to be a big boon. Like, 45 kills, definitely doable. When it was sitting at, like, 90 kills that I had to get in order for it to push around, I wasn't so convinced. Uh, my skill is ready. I'm just going to pop that on cooldown for right now because they are pushing up on me pretty aggressively. Luckily, I have HP regen. That's one of the first upgrades that I bought on the in-between menu in order to get it moving. And it has actually regenerated a lot of our health before the enemy could get to us. I think most of the damage I'm getting off on the boss right now is from Storm Javelins, unfortunately. And the Storm Javelins do not do that much damage. So we may have a long path to killing the boss here. The music in this game has been exceptionally good. I've enjoyed it tremendously. Lots of double kick sort of uh, Dexter's Lab meets Danny Elfman style tunes in this game that I think actually rock pretty hard. So the composer did a really, really good job at like making music that makes the game come alive and feel sort of distinct. Yeah, if you guys could like get back off me, that'd be great. So yeah, the XP nerf I think is what's getting us in trouble here. At 25% speed, like, uh, malice. 
is making it sort of difficult to get to the boss because I don't have the DPS that I need in order to get to where I want to go. Like, I need to cut through the swath right here, but with my abilities auto-firing, they're just auto-firing in every direction instead of, like, one direction, and so I think we may actually be going down just in very, very slow death spiral form. Ah, there it is, dude. We finally went down. Like, I had a feeling we were in a death spiral. So far from what I've played, you absolutely have to have the lava balls as one of your picks for, like, your victory to be shockingly easy. But this brings us back to the menu where now we can take a look at our upgrades. We only made 600 bucks right there, so not really... Not really enough for us to do anything with. However, uh, we also got no achievements because your achievements only bank if you win. And so anyways, let's run... Oh, I don't know. Let's try out Forge City, which says it's a little bit harder. But let's try Ogle. Yeah, there's six characters. I don't know if they're all in the game just yet. I haven't unlocked their condition yet to get there, but I did unlock Ogle, and I haven't played Ogle at all. So let's go ahead and try out Ogle. As you can see, every level has a different theme. Sometimes you're fighting robots. Sometimes you're... Ooh, an Area of Denial ability. Okay, I need to, I need to win with Ogle. I need this to be unlocked for every character. Because if you combine this bad boy right here with, like, the uh, the, the lava orbs, man, poof! What's her special? Oh, it's just like a big AoE knockback? Okay, I can live with that. Uh, let's go for volcanic orbs. That's exactly what I was talking about right there. Let's get our, vac uh, our volcanic orb on. There we go. Out of my way, robots. So, yeah, so far there's been a zombie level. There's been a robot level. There's been a, there, there, there's been a goblin level. It seems like they've got all their bases covered when it comes to tropes, which actually I think is a strong idea. I do like, let's maybe go for the Necromancer Gauntlet next, and I think we may have a super run in the making. I'm getting things that I like right now. I think we are gonna wanna take the Bracer to get our cooldowns down. Our cooldowns seem to be very long on some of our abilities, but one of the nice things about that, and one of the things that's done really well about the game, is that every single ability has a little track up here where you can see how long it's gonna be before it goes off again. Absolutely love that. Uh, we're gonna wanna go for area of attack size. Uh, almost all of our abilities benefit from that right now, so we've got a very strong synergy on the lineup on that front. However, I'm going to want to take in like a dragon heart. I'm going to want to take in a bracer and I'm going to want to take in. Oh, cool. We got a freezy flower right there. Nice, dude. Uh, let's go ahead and wade through the enemy and see if we can get some XP to maybe get up to the next level. Oh, bosses are only partially affected by freezy flowers. Good to know. Uh, you guys go back. There's the Bracer, ask and ye shall receive. Our cooldowns have been reduced by 10%. Uh, the biggest beneficiary from this right now is gonna be the Lava Orb, which has a very long cooldown until you've leveled it up three or four times. And so it's gonna get a big benefit from that, and we're gonna be able to keep its uptime much more satisfying. Uh, wiped out a couple of enemies over there. I do feel like our churn is going okay right now. Chest, let's see what we got. Maybe we got a triple chest, we got a single chest, but another... 10%-ish cooldown reduction is definitely not something that I'm going to turn my nose up at. I don't know what those are. I'm going to try and focus on them. It looks like they explode. We've got another level up. I'm going to go for... Golden Trident might actually be okay since we've got so much area denied. We may want to go for something a little bit more focused and directional. Uh, basically, it alternates between firing on the verticals and the horizontals in cardinal directions. I haven't had too many problems with this ability. I think it's fine. I think it's a perfectly okay ability. Uh, let's get some more attack size. Basically, I want my spikes to take up the whole screen. That's what I'm shooting for, is I, I want full screen spikes. Uh, we only killed off one mine right there. I'm going to need a few more mines to die before I'm going to feel comfortable moving to the right. A lot of XP banked right there. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. A little bit of watermelon right there. Cool you off on a summer afternoon, unless you're me, and then it'll kill you because I'm allergic to watermelon. Uh, we got another attack size variation right there. So our orbs, our lightning, our javelins, and our spikes are now much, much larger than they were previously. I'll 100% take it. That's good stuff right there.
We've got some kind of battering ram over there that I just couldn't get away from. Uh, this is going to be a level that's focused on outrunning me and being faster than I am. We may want to track down something that increases our movement speed because we are a little plodding right now. We're not, we're not amazingly fast at the moment, and I would like to be a little bit quicker. Got money right there. I'm kind of fishing for food at the moment because our health is not looking great. Uh, he's got a little charge going off. I would like your chest. Can you die, please? I would just desperately love for you to die. It would be just fantastic. Um, Dragonheart. Yep, that's what I wanted. 15% more damage. It's not going to do a whole lot of good right now, but with a couple more stacks, it'll be the stuff. Uh, we have not killed the boss, but the... Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're a little behind the eight ball by my personal timer. Uh, volcanic orbs just leveled up, so now it got its cooldown reduced by two seconds. Good. That'll be helpful. Oh, I got hit with projectiles. Hey, I'm supposed to be the bullet hell here, not you guys. Uh, we're going to have to take out those turrets, I think. Uh, let me get another bracer. Yep. All right, turret. As soon as I get a straight line of fire on you, please understand that you're going to die. I think we got one of the turrets out of the way. Good. And so we should be able to hold our ground now without projectiles really, really intervening on our long-term survival prospects. Perfect. A little bit of fire orb right there. Let's go for Dragonheart upgrade. We don't really need area denial from the flask because we already have that with our abilities. I would like to level up my spikes a little bit more, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to want to give it to me. I'm not getting the things that I want. Maybe I should check on the menu and see if there's a thing I need to unlock in order to get uh, to get rerolls. Because a reroll here and there would actually, I think, be very, very beneficial. We've got another charging drill guy right there. We're probably going to want to focus him down just because he forces us to move in directions. And that's going to be a big loss in health if it happens at a moment where we don't want it to happen. Uh, there's the Wolf's Fang upgrade right there. It doesn't give us anything on cooldown, but it did give us damage, and it did give us area size. Uh, I would like to kill you, though. Die for me, turret. Please die for me, turret. There we go. Oh, we got a bunch of these drills now. This is several different flavors of terrible. There's strawberry. There's mint. There's all kinds of flavors in there. There we go. I need a big wipe spree on some of these enemies over here. We're not really stacking XP at a proper rate for this phase of the game. I'm going to need some more level ups. I'm definitely going to need to get like a triple chest or something where I kill a boss if we want this to work out. Kill speed seems to be okay. Like time to kill doesn't seem bad, but more damage would be good. I'm going to take another necromancy gauntlet. Took a little bit of splash damage from the mine right there, and it looks like we're fighting a dwarf. Dude, the dwarves would be aiding us right now. Why are we fighting against the dwarves? Leave them dwarves alone, man. What did those dwarves ever do to you? A little bit of... I didn't see that charger down there, unfortunately. Come on. All right, focus on the boss for a second until we start getting surrounded again. Basically, whenever Fireball comes up, I'm going to try to advance like a little bit and just clear out a direction, but he's still not dying, surprisingly enough. There we go, he's down. Now we can actually make a concerted push down in this direction. A little bit of gold right there, volcanic orbs. We now get four orbs, and they've got a much lower cooldown, which is great, because I'm in an XP farming mood right now. Let's take... I don't want any of these. All of these do not do what I want to do. I guess I'll take Raven's Wing. That didn't work out so great for me last time, but I'll take it. You think I'd learn my lesson, but nope. To the left. Too many drills to really push super hard. Getting eaten by dwarves right now. Apparently, I'm particularly flavorful in dwarf society. Very tasty. Or so I've been told. Go ahead and push them back so that I miss that charge right there and I can get around behind and churn through this blob right here. Good, 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 good. A 
Don't have a pushback left. Let's go for a little bit more damage. I still feel like our TTK is just a little bit too high. Like, ideally, I want everything to die, like, the moment it strikes my fireball. Watermelon, I choose you. Go ahead and take out the turret, because between dodging drills and dodging bullets, there's only so much that my limited skill can handle. Oh, there's a bunch of turrets around here. Beautiful. Oh, good. Landmines over here, too. Well, what else could go wrong? He said, knowing full well that it's super plausible that more could go wrong. Go ahead and see if I can get the turret real fast. And as soon as I get the turret, we've got another charger boss. Unfortunate. I'm going to try to focus him with as much damage as I possibly can for right now. I wanted to figure out where the aggro range was on the turret so that maybe I could stay away from it. But it's not working so great. I think we may have to go deal with the turret. But the problem is I got myself in this loop where I'm finding turrets to kill them. But by the time I get there, all that I've done is unlock another turret that can fire at me. Good news is we actually killed that boss in good time. Uh, we got another volcanic orb upgrade. Very nice. Do I see a level up phase? Are we at the 11 minute skeleton phase of this journey? Okay, well let's get leveled then. Let's not fail to capitalize on this tremendous boon that the game has given us. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade our trident to deal a little bit more damage. Basically, I'm looking to increase damage in every facing that I possibly can. However, Things appear to be going pretty well right now, actually. Then again, these enemies are kind of weak. They're not exactly the stiffest stuff. Another level up. Let's go ahead and take another volcanic orb. Very nice. Okay, now we're, now we're getting to a spot. Now I'm starting to feel comfortable in my chair. A couple minutes ago, I wasn't so sure. We do have an avocado up to the north, and the boss is here. It's time to get down. Uh, I'm probably going to focus more on just like, well, let's let's get some damage off on him, I guess. We'll get like a strong start moving. Uh, he doesn't seem to have that much HP, so I think we'll be all right. I'm going to grab some of these crystals up here, though. Uh, another... Ooh, yeah, let's go for the Wolf's Fang. Wolf's Fang cooldown reduction sounds mighty fine to me. Alright, so let's keep it tight. I do feel as though the wolf fang is going off in a satisfying way. DPS still a little tiny bit low for these bigger guys. Like, we're getting them, but I would like to get them faster. I'm going to try real hard not to get trapped over here. Hard to see the saw blades, unfortunately, so I'm trying to, like, watch for the saw blade when it comes out. But I think I, I think we, we may have this. I don't want to speak too soon, because then I'm going to look like a big old stupid dummy on the internet, which is basically my career at this point. Not exactly what, what I think my mom was looking for when she said she wanted me to have a good career when I was an adult, but, you know, I get these guys pushed back a little bit. Uh, you can farm if you want, so you don't have to kill the boss. You can actually get, like, a big gap on the boss and just farm enemies for a while if you wanted to level up super high. I did it for about eight minutes on one map, but it started getting nasty. I think it gets worse the longer you wait. And so, anyways, it started getting real nasty, so I finally chip damaged the boss and finished him off. A lot of big guys in between me and the boss. I'm going to eat that axe right there or that saw blade. Just to get back into base contact with the boss. We're going to knock everything back. It is getting a little busy on screen right now, and I'm having trouble tracking exactly where I'm at versus where the enemy's at. But, oh god. Okay, what is this? Oh yeah, that drags all the XP to me. That would be magnificent right now, actually. 
That'd be the best. Uh, let's go bigger Necromancer Blast. Let's go more damage right there. Let's go Wolf Fang upgrade. And it should be Sayonara pretty soon. There we go. We beat the level. Hell yeah. So I got to show you guys a stunning, heartbreaking loss. And I got to show you guys an absolutely thrilling victory. As you can see, it gives you a pathing of what you did the entire time. Uh, it looks like we actually didn't move around too much. We kind of stayed in the corner. But I really, really like this, actually, that it gives you a replay of the entire map that you just did. There we go. We went off to Mordor that time. Yeah, we took like a big trip out that one. We were being chased by the drills. Uh, so anyways, you'll see all of the things that you unlock. So we beat the forge, so we unlocked Toxic Stench. Uh, we lasted 10 minutes with Ogle, so we got the Wolf's Fang unlocked for every character. We got 100 gold for making it to level 10 with Ogle. We got 200 for hitting level 20. And then we got 5,000 gold, which means that we got an exploration prize. Power-ups and chests will spawn from time to time around you. Nice. Well, that'll be good. I do like that we got, like, a fart cloud that we can play around with, too. Uh, I don't really have too many complaints about this game. Like, it does exactly what it says that it wants to do on the tin. That's it. Like, it is exactly what it promises to be. But I am intrigued by the idea of the Ziggurat developers throwing their hat in on a Vampire Survivors game. Because the Ziggurat developers are very, very good at modeling, animating, UI design... Uh, gameplay theory wise like they make really really good games and so I'm interested to see what they do with this title in the future My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day So you don't have to today up on the chopping block. We had army of ruin tomorrow. We will have something else Thank you for hanging out with me. That's about all I got Take care, and I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet later folks